I tell you, this uh, Stargirl show is, uh, well, it's kind of strange of how to approach it because uh, there are lots of details that are standard for, uh, you know, uh, CW and that sort of approach to it as the Berlanti projects go uh, with, you know, cringy stuff and the whole, the, it's still the, the high school soap opera elements of it are just awful. Uh, it's very formulaic and you've seen it a million times <laughs> and, uh, and, and, it, and the worst part of it is lacking in credibility with it. You just, you just don't buy it. Um, but the rest of it, and, uh, um, and as I noticed in the previous episodes that the, the villains tend to steal the show. They're, they're very well done. And this one's no different. So Brainwave was the main villain last episode and he ended up in a coma. And he's still there. So Icicle comes in to take charge, and boy does he. So we get a little uh, backstory on Icicle. Uh, his wife died, apparently, probably due to cancer, and uh, she was exposed to something, some sort of toxin, and he holds society to blame uh, for all this, and that, that's the... That's the story behind him, uh, how he became Icicle and what. He doesn't deal with that. He already had the powers at the time of her death and they they had a son and of course well guess what he's one of the kids at uh, Courtney's high school and and that's the thing this is they, they literally set this up as typical soap opera stuff where there's two families at war with one another <laughs> so you have the villain families uh, at war with the hero families and um some of the villains might actually become heroes. I don't know. I, 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 I don't, I, I didn't really pay attention to a lot of the promos, but one of these uh, guys is going to be the new hour man. And I don't know if it's icicle son or whatnot, but anyway, of course, uh, this show introduces more of the idea of the justice society coming together and uh, developing that story. They don't really do that very well. The plot point in and of itself is not a bad one. It's, it's, this is all done up as legacy story uh, with Stargirl uh, inheriting the, uh, the, the star title from Starman. And she's just convinced herself that he's her father. And I'm assuming they're going to uh, just say, yeah, he was. But that will have to be explained, I suppose, um, to somewhat. Otherwise, it's like, why is it why does the staff react to her and not to uh, uh pat and or anyone else for that matter it seems to be some sort of genetic deal with it or there could be some other guy who because uh, apparently sylvester inherited this from the original iron uh iron man the original star man so she might be related to them uh, as I've said before, I'm familiar with the character from other comic books, but not her own and uh, not uh, what her origins were. So I don't really know <laughs> if she's in any relation to the other star men or not. But anyway, uh, so, the, yeah, the villains are the more interesting aspects. And here you get this rather sympathetic story. Uh, uh, the backstory for Icicle in which his wife dies and he's heartbroken about it. His son is devastated and, uh, it's, you, you know, you have some sympathy for him and he's driven by this, uh, desire of vengeance and whatnot. Uh, and then uh, she even refers to, uh, his mission and they keep coming back to this, uh, this is overall plot and that, uh, the, the town is uh, like a, a, an experiment in how they can uh, make uh, uh, everyone safe, they keep referring to it. Man, I hope this doesn't end up like Black Lightning, where it's just an analogy for Make America Great Again. But, oh, God, it really looks like it. And that's just, oh, would be just the absolute worst. Uh, hopefully not, but, well... The, uh, so there's a lot of the, the goofiness of the characters that can be a drag on it, uh, especially the girl who's going to be the new Dr. Midnight. Uh, it's landing on thick. It could be that whatever leads her to become Dr. Midnight could uh, have that character, uh, you know, uh, put her feet on the ground and uh, rein that foolishness in, and she might be a good character. I don't know. Uh, but the idea that uh, she's just the star girl at the end is just going to recruit people to be the team. I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> That's how it works. 
Uh, it certainly isn't for Wildcat. I did know her origin story. The female Dr. Mida, this isn't her story at all. In fact, the, the girl's mother seems to be more of what the original female Dr. Midnight was like. She was a doctor and all this sort of stuff, but uh, they decided it's got to be a teen and all this sort of thing. Uh, and, of course, the outfits look more like the original characters than the ones that these legacy characters adopted, which um, I would have thought would be better, but, you know, nobody remembers them. It didn't work out. As most of the time, these legacy characters don't work out all that great. Uh, Star Girl being the exception, uh, but the rest of them, yeah, not so much. And people just kind of want the original. But uh, of, of interest, she grabbed a few things. She grabbed the mask of Wildcat and the girl that keeps getting picked on at high school for being a slut, apparently, because she uh, caught the interest of the popular girl's boyfriend. So there you go. Yeah, she's in ruins. But apparently, she will be a Wildcat. Um, I don't know, Stargirl just says, I want you to be Wildcat. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, the Dr. Midnight, they, they put up this deal that the owl is still waiting for Dr. Midnight, despite the fact that he's been dead for 10 years and the owl doesn't know it. I guess the owl's immortal. I don't know. Uh, so I guess the owl may choose the girl. Uh, I don't recall any kind of mysticism with Dr. Midnight's owl. Uh, Dr. Midnight uh, developed a means by which he could see in the dark because he's blind otherwise and he has these goggles that help him and that sort of thing but other than that you know there's no real uh superpowers there he had a lot of you know, gadgets and stuff like batman but uh, that was about it our man had a drug that made him super strong for an hour <laughs> uh, i didn't see her finding any of that uh dr fate's helmet uh would contain the spirit of nabu and they could have introduced that but i she didn't seem to have that she grabbed a pink pin which is apparently all that's left of johnny thunder's magical thunderbolt which is kind of like a genie so i'm guessing someone will have that uh but that's it uh, 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 dr fate would be the one that w could pass on the uh powers to someone else kind of like with star girl's uh staff there but other than that you know I don't know. It, it might have been a, a, a narrative where they stumble into the, the the Justice Society's headquarters and they find these things and they're inspired to follow through with these characters. And that might have worked. But, I don't know, it, it comes across kind of stupid. But the, other than that, this was an okay episode. Uh, Icicle is an impressive villain. That, that, again, the villains are done very well. They, they may have made a mistake here where... Uh, the, the wizard guy, uh, he doesn't want to be a supervillain anymore. He just wants to live out his life. Uh, he's enjoying uh, just being the mayor of the town and uh, raising his family and everything. And he doesn't want any of this supervillain stuff coming back up. But it's coming anyway. And in the battle to draw out Stargirl, uh, Icicle uh, uses a bus of kids um, uh, to draw her out or what have you. Uh, and here the CGI begins to fail. It really looks pretty bad. Some of the CGI in the last episode was pretty bad with the robot in, in a field. The robot looks a lot better at night. And in here, he looked okay because he was in the woods in the shade. So I think, yeah, keep that robot in darkened areas. <laughs> uh, but it, 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 you know, you could tell, oh, it looks like a cheap video game with the, with the bus coming off the bridge and everything. But the robot actually saves the bus. And then Icicle deliberately sets out to kill the son of his partner, the wizard. Um, now, I thought this was a plot to get the wizard and he would, that he would frame Stargirl for it and the wizard would come hunting for Stargirl and that sort of thing. But uh, no, that's not what happens. Uh, the, the, the wizard uh, goes to Icicle and uh, attempts to attack him. He's saying, you know, tell me this was an accident. And he, he fires up the magic wand, but then Icicle is able to freeze him to death. And he dies. That's it. And it's declared that he died of a heart attack in the media over the news of his son's death. And they leave it as that. Uh, where the magic wand goes, I guess Icicle has it. But uh, Icicle is the real leader of this group, and, uh, and he's just as sinister and wicked as Brainwave was and creepy and everything. Meanwhile, he appears to have the hots for uh, Courtney's mom. <laughs> so they got that going on. <laughs> but it's an interesting take they did on this with him where he gets this sort of sympathetic backstory, uh, but he chose the wrong way to deal with whatever wrongs he, he suffered. 
And uh, so, uh, and it also kind of reminded me of like in the Batman animated series where they did that take on Dr. Freeze and that he was a really sympathetic character, better than this, uh, with his wife being frozen and all that. Uh, so there's some similarities here. But all in all, a pretty good episode, even though there wasn't a, the action was very uh, brief, you know, it was sort of towards the tail end of the show. And then uh, I didn't really see the son getting killed. I thought maybe he would have been threatened and hurt and in the whole event with the bus and everything. And then he just gets killed. I mean, and so I was, and then the wizard gets killed. So I, I got, like I said, I thought, oh, this would be a means to turn him back to his villainous ways. Um, but no, he just outright kills him. And I, I guess to get the wand, I don't know, but, um, Meanwhile, the, the cheesiness of, I'm going to go recruit some new Justice Society people. And, yeah, it just doesn't work that way. I mean, uh, on the one hand, uh, the way Courtney's written is almost as if she's got some kind of mental illness. <laughs> I mean, she, and it's, 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 it's hurting the credibility of the character. Um, and, uh, you know, there's not enough there to explain why she is the way she is. It's, it, it's, it, it's too stupid. Um, uh, and other aspects, it's okay, but, um, so I don't know. I don't blame that for the actress. I think she does as good as she can for what she's given, but the way it's written, I, and the way she just takes off to this, I don't think there's enough there. Obviously she, she's suffered because of the loss of her father. She doesn't know what became of him and she's been pining for that her whole life. And this is blown up into that. So that would go a long way to explain her mentality here. But uh, all of this uh, superhero stuff that she's just suddenly taken with, uh, you know, I don't know that she would have been. But I guess, you know, the saving grace of that is that it has to do with her, you know, her love for her father and this image she has of him as being here. She just loves the idea that he was actually a superhero. He wasn't some deadbeat who ran off. Instead, he was a superhero who, you know, died in the heat of battle and all this sort of stuff. Um but, uh, yeah, it's, it, I can't say again, the show is not bad. It's not this glorious thing that, oh, you'd been, you need to make time for this. But it is a lot of ways on par with, uh, The Flash, which I've always said is the best of the CW, which of course is not saying much, <laughs> but sometimes, uh, The Flash has actually had excellent episodes. I don't know that this one will, but it might. And, uh, this one was pretty close to that in a lot of ways and especially the the the, the real uh, shining part of this series it are the villains <laughs> so far so good with those um so uh yeah i the whole check up on the next episode i figured by now i would have dropped it because there are there is the silliness teenage soap opera nonsense and just you know certain kind of laziness and formulaic stuff that creeps in here but uh, especially for an episode like this, it was pretty much to a minimum. And uh, that's quite the positive. If they do more of that, might have something here. So anyway, there you go. Stargirl Icicle on the DC Universe app or CW. I think, yeah, yeah, they, it's available there as well. It's for free. Yeah, yeah. All right. Thank you for watching and listening. So why not like and subscribe and check out that link description below. That'll take you to my mini stores and have plenty of goodies for you. You know, hats, mugs, stickers, posters, all that goody, goody stuff. Plus, you can head over to IndiePlanet.com and pick up a copy of my comic book, Night Night. <laughs> oh, yeah. Plus, you can also catch my podcast, Mr. Nelson show over at RadioMisfits.com. And you can also watch my videos on my channel at BitChute. That's the Mr. Nelson channel on BitChute.com.